वेलकम टू सुबर मनी टू वीडियोस विच आई लव मेकिंग आर हाउ टू इम्प्रूव एस एन इन्वेस्टर एंड वॉट आर द इन्वेस्टिंग मिस्टेक्स विच पीपल मेक ऑब्वियसली दीज वीडियोज विल हैव सम ओवरलैप विद द प्रीवियस वीडियोज विच आई हैव मेड एंड मे बी सम अदर्स हैव ऑल्सो मेड सच वीडियोज सो लेट मीज जस्ट स्टार्ट वन मिस्टेक नंबर वन चूजिंग अ रॉन्ग एडवाइजर now many people believe that they don't need an advisor which means i am calling them self advised so there are three four categories one is uh, self advised second is those who think that all the investment on uh, that they need can be got on youtube free or on any other social media <coughs> you read blogs you read uh, books and you read uh, you watch youtube videos and you have learned everything about investing and there is nothing more to know or uh, three uh, believing that they've got the right uh, advisor because uh, of some uh, process that they have in place which may not be a very robust process so if why am i put saying that first because getting a wrong advisor can harm your portfolio much more than anything else that can and very many uh, advisors have no clue about investing uh, advising or taxation right so if you don't know any of these things how are you going to be a good advisor so getting a good advisor choosing a good advisor is a longish process i i may have made videos on this i've written blogs on this there are books written on how to choose a good advisor and to believe that you don't need good advice is again dramatically wrong because even people who know that they must invest that they must buy a term insurance somebody needs to pull them push them prod them to uh, make those things happen so if you are a person who is extremely well motivated well educated uh, willing to spend a lot of time doing this and you have no great other hobbies and you are willing to uh, do the painful documentation i find it very painful dealing with the uh, investment documentation uh, including loss shares and uh, loss dividends and things like that uh then uh, maybe uh, investing is not for you maybe you need an advisor so choosing a good advisor is step number 1 many of us make a mistake of choosing a wrong advisor youtube is not an advisor uh social media is not an advisor even at best they can be generic advice equities is good in the long run does not mean that when you enter and when you exit you will always make money which is a good real return no such guarantees are available your advisor should tell you that right so that's the step 1 uh many people who advise you to invest in index funds uh are actually selling funds other than index funds like even a mutual fund which has an index fund it has an index fund because they know some people believe that they should put money in only in index fund but even those fund houses are not too keen to be selling index funds they want to sell other funds and which is fair enough but while giving advice a lot of people on youtube will say you should not have many large cap funds many mid cap funds many small cap funds perfectly correct but there can be a very focused 20 share large cap fund and a very uh, longish 80 shares uh, large cap fund so for your father it may be good to put in that 80 uh, shares uh, large cap fund and for you you may be better off putting in a 20 uh, shares uh, focused large cap fund or the same person could hold both yes there could be some overlap but this person who is handling a smaller focused large cap fund will pick up only those shares which he think are good for the ma- for the portfolio over the next 2 years or 3 years he is not taking a very long term view and he is taking a view that it's okay if i have higher standard deviation i want to get a higher absolute return over a long period of time after adjusting for expenses and tax right and inflation of course uh now understanding why each fund has is you have to understand the philosophy of the fund read the fund and be willing to in, be invested in that fund for maybe 5 uh, years or 6 years right so if you don't know why you are picking up a fund if you don't know what is the overlap and there could be an overlap today and that overlap may disappear tomorrow today somebody may be very long in hfc uh, limited or hfc bank now it's only hfc bank uh, in the matter of time uh then you will uh, you will not know why he he or she has invested and uh, you may say oh there is tremendous overlap let me get out of this 
and the next month you find that their portfolios are different so finding the overlap do you need to remove all the overlap these are questions which a good advisor will be able to tell you uh, don't expect answers for this in uh, on youtube channels etc because uh, yes i can say there should not be any overlap but you should also find out why there is a overlap when there is an overlap will the will the overlap go away right only when you have answers to all these questions will you be able to uh, invest very smart just don't believe that oh you should not have more than one large cap fund maybe you should have maybe you should not have large cap fund you should have index fund maybe you should not have index fund maybe you should have etf or maybe you should invest in those uh, good quality shares directly and for small cap you should have a small cap fund right make your own choices but make it sensibly one very important mistake that i see people make is waiting for the right time in uh, in tamil there is a saying that uh, you wait for the waves to stop before you get into the sea you can't do it right you, there is no perfect time if you invest today and the market falls 10% tomorrow 20% 30% you never know we are uh, in the world full of humans right so anybody can have a heart attack anybody can lose elections anybody can win elections right so uh, technically is it possible that uh, rahul gandhi could become the prime minister of india well technically it is possible what will happen to the economy i have no clue maybe we have zero expectation therefore we might exceed expectation maybe a good cabinet will run it i have no clue i am not even guessing what will happen will the same modi government continue for the next 30 40 50 100 years i have no clue but uh, congress i was there for 50 years so will bjp be there for 50 years we don't know don't try keep guessing oh this has happened that has happened should i cut the tree right i keep saying don't ask for the way what is a good time to cut the tree you want the wood you cut the tree but cutting the tree makes no sense just collect the mangoes that you want right so similarly don't wait for the perfect time to invest so perfect time to invest was maybe 300 years ago 400 years ago 200 years ago somebody in your family could have bought a lot of land and kept it bought gold and kept it and it would have appreciated it they didn't invest or they did invest and uh, they have used it up so your father could have invested 50 years ago 60 years ago or you could have invested 10 years ago 15 years ago you didn't so the, today is the best time to start without worrying about what the market will do yes because you're a newcomer you should do an sip or you should do an sgp suddenly you've got 1 crore somewhere some inheritance put it in a liquid fund wait for a month and then start doing an stp maybe 1 lakh per month because you are new to the market today if i get an x amount of money straight away i may go and buy one single share immaterial of the amount because the question is what is a big amount uh, right so when you started your life with a 3000 rupee sip uh, 3000 was a big amount because that is the only amount that you could save 20 years back or 25 years back but today let us say your portfolio is worth 2 crores and your monthly salary is about uh, say 3 lakhs right so what is a lump sum for you is very different when your po- portfolio is big uh, and somebody comes and gives you 5 lakhs that is less that is less than 2 months income and anyway you are doing maybe 2 lakhs of sip so uh, adding another 5 lakhs to one of your schemes is not going to change things much so what is a big amount what is a small amount what you should do lump sum what you should do sip keeps changing so don't worry too much about uh, those things if you have a method then it's a different thing when should you invest you should invest today if that that is the only answer don't keep asking everybody what do you think will happen to up election what will happen to tamil nadu election i'm saying that because i know none of the elections are due now but you could have up election you could have gujarat election you could have delhi election you could have uh, karnataka election something will keep happening in this country this got nothing to do with the market maybe that day the day the results come market could fall market could rise something would happen but a day to day fluctuation should not bother a long term investor be very clear are you an investor or are you a trader i'm i'm assuming you're a mutual fund investor then sip works for you do 10 year 12 year sip 3 year sip is to keep reviewing what is happening right so if you don't want to do all that then then there is an index fund but if you want to uh, get some uh, additional returns and you are looking at something you could look at some other funds also but again like i said go to step number 
getting yourself a good advisor is very important advisor knows what is good for you what is bad for you that in two years time your son or daughter is going to get into medical college you're going to need uh, say 25 lakhs or 30 lakhs per year for five years that is about one and a half two crores that money maybe should be in a, a short ultra short bond fund or a short term income fund or maybe some part of that asset could be in multi asset that specific hand holding has to be done by an advisor and therefore uh, not knowing when to invest is perfectly all right but if you have a method if you have a method of say technicals or something because of which you decide then fine find a technicals person and then decide but is it possible to uh, uh, is it possible to time the market well it is possible to somewhat time the market at least you can avoid big losses right so uh, you can uh, you can avoid uh, being in the market at the extreme end or quickly coming into the market at the bottom right so some of these things you can do will it improve your returns maybe marginally maybe not uh, will it protect you from the downside reasonably yes will we, is it possible for everybody to do it no you have to have tremendous control over your greed uh, because if the market is at a high uh, or it's at an all time high the pe's are high and the earnings are not uh, keeping pace maybe it's a time to stop investing i'm not saying withdraw but stop investing so some of these things some of these uh, tricks and tips might work but to think these tricks and tips will be available on youtube and for free it is not going to work and if you can't find any uh, great value add in some of the videos which we make you should stop watching because there's too much of uh, nonsense going into your head or just being repetitive i'm being repetitive so many times right so be careful about what you're listening also uh, people uh, come to me uh, there was this person whom i knew from a previous relationship uh, who met me at the airport and who was convinced that I should give him a number saying uh, you will get so much return in uh, uh, equity funds and I was refusing to give him an answer so he said no but you must tell me should I, will I get at least 12 percent I said look I am not here to give you guarantees I have no clue what return I am getting on my portfolio I really am indifferent I know I have enough money to live the rest of my life I know my dividend income is far greater than my expenses so what happens to my portfolio is of absolutely no concern to me so I don't look at my portfolio and say oh Narin has done better or Prashant has done better or Anand Radha Krishnan has done better or Roshi has done better to me it does not matter as long as I keep getting my dividends as long as I don't care about standard deviation that's another problem with people I don't care a damn about standard deviation uh, then what kind of returns are you getting what is important to me it does not matter what returns I get that does not mean you should not worry about what returns you get if you are interested in knowing all that you should maintain a proper system have proper accounts do a quarterly analysis then decide which fund to be in which fund to get out of that's all your call it's not my call at all right so um, another mistake which I see people make is looking for new products every day and saying oh that green color package is good I keep telling them it's like going to a medical shop standing there and saying oh like I like that red color medicine can I have it so he says sir aapko, do you have diabetes no that's a diabetes medicine don't that's okay but I like the packaging so please give me some does not make any sense don't look at every product that comes your way i don't in spite of being uh, in spite of running a channel i don't so many people come and tell me oh we are going to launch a focus fund we are going to do this we are going to do that to me it does not matter i don't look at all every nfo which comes and everything that happens every product which comes i have not invested in nps right i have nothing against nps but i will not invest in uh, uh, nav uh, scheme which is uh, run by the government or the government's dictates i'll stay away from it personal views right so be calm, be sure about that another thing which i love people saying is the overconfidence of what they have about equity they are very sure that equity will give 13 14 percent return and in the long run so long run to them means five years seven years ten years 22 years six months one year whatever each person can have his or her own definition of long term and they're sure that in the short term there will be volatility but in the long term they will get great returns i have no clue from where they get that confidence they have not got it themselves but they have read about it they watch youtube videos they watch other people's portfolios and they believe this will happen beware 
another uh, mistake which i see is people having extremely long portfolios four large cap funds three mid cap funds three uh, small cap funds then some uh, generic funds some thematic funds and uh, some balanced funds because they hear a fund manager speak uh, narin comes and says this is a time to be in balanced advantage fund so they want to put some money in balanced advantage fund um there is no point in doing this right i i have in started investing in a commodity fund which has done terribly over the last 15 years and i've just started an sip in that um, nav is about 7 rupees go and guess uh, which one is it i put some lump sum i put some uh, uh, very small sip amount i know it's going to be taxed at uh, full rates in my hand i know i'm not going to make too much money but just for fun i put some money does not mean you should do that right you you have to make your choice of what you want to do don't look at every product you don't need every product though you don't need so many funds you may need one large cap fund maybe you need one mid cap fund maybe you need one uh, short cap uh, small cap fund uh, or maybe you need one index fund and the ability to sit tight doing nothing right that people lack so because they lack that they want to keep investing in every product which comes whether it is a uh, insurance product whether it is a mutual fund product whether they need insurance whether they need investment whether they need a pension they don't check any of those things right like suppose you are a young uh, suppose you are a couple uh, i'm not saying young or old and you realize that uh, you have a lot of money and you have nobody to who will inherit it you still have to plan as to what you want to have for your money to happen because people around you might be like vultures and hawks wanting to uh, take up take your bone and flesh and sell your kidney also right so be careful about what you're doing with your money it does not matter uh, how much you need if you have an excess of what you need or if you have less than what you need you still have to manage your money you don't have a choice saying oh there's nobody after me so it doesn't really matter yes it doesn't matter but it has to last in good shape till you were till one of you are uh, surviving right if till the second spouse is dead this money has to last and in good condition so that you can access it when you want to not when the government wants uh, to take it and give it off to somebody else if you die in test state that will happen so making a will uh, and very important thing which most investors miss out they think oh will this is meant for older people uh, and i will may i can always make a will in spite of seeing covid people are not worried uh, that they could pass off tomorrow right uh, we saw 30 40 50 60 70 100 100 year olds pass away because of covid nothing protects you from death right should you have benchmarks against which to compare your funds or should you have goals to me goals are more important so i wouldn't worry too much about standard deviation alpha beta i'm uh, my fund is underperforming as long as my fund is able to give me money for my goals at the time when i want it without me having to uh, sleep less or eat less uh, i should not be bothered about whether i'm beating the benchmark of course for a fund manager it is important to beat the benchmark so for you also to use it as a criteria to say should i be in this uh, large cap fund or that large cap fund or should i be in this index fund or should i be in one managed fund and one index fund you need to compare this and have some benchmarks but it does not mean that you keep constantly comparing and shifting from one fund to the other that makes no sense but people do it Uh, many people who try to invest and many of their advisors have no clue of how investment taxation works so your regular income is taxed at regular rates your investment income is taxed even today at concessional rates provided you choose your investments properly so keeping money in bank fixed deposit makes no sense even today it's you're much better off keeping money in a, let's say a short term income fund or a long term long bond fund and leaving it there for 10 20 30 years because you don't need the money whereas if you keep money in a bank fixed deposit you will pay tax on it on a uh, on a regular annual basis right so similarly for your earned income you cannot postpone your earned income but you can postpone your investment income uh, you can uh, you can you need to know how to use uh, uh, clubbing because there are people who transfer money from their account to their spouse's account and think oh i've shifted the income no you have not shifted the income you have made a big mistake similarly when you are ma- managing your parents portfolio knowing how much to keep there how much to keep with you whether to give them money on a monthly basis whether to invest in their name will they blow it away right knowing all these things is what makes it personal finance it is not just watching youtube videos and saying oh i understand everything in personal finance no you don't because there are not very many youtubers who understand what they are talking right so understanding investment process understanding taxation both are important as far as investing is concerned 
episode right uh, uh, another uh, thing which i noticed is uh, higher the risk higher the return i don't know from where people have got this theory uh, higher the risk sometimes is higher return if higher risk always got you higher return then there is no risk right the risk lies in the probability that sometimes you may get a good return sometimes you may not get a good return that is the risk in a in any investment right uh, asset allocation don't think that you can watch videos and learn about asset allocation your risk profiling and asset allocation is extremely personal you have to sit you have to understand you have to know how you will behave under certain circumstances which none of us know and uh, have a very fluid asset allocator because when your asset allocation is good you should be able to sleep well and eat well if you are unable to sleep well because of your asset allocation or your spouse is unable to sleep well because of asset allocation your asset allocation is wrong right your understanding of risk is wrong so put all that in place only then asset allocation will work uh, many people advise you don't to not invest in uh, funds which look uh, which look very confused and you do not know what they are doing my take is very different if there is a good fund manager and uh, the fund uh, is nav is 7 rupees or 8 rupees um, then i go and invest and i made fantastic return so the fund in which i invested is uh, the icici prudential equity opportunities fund or something it's called business opportunities or equity opportunity i have made fantastic returns now if you have invested in an index fund obviously you would have missed this i was doing a decent size sip and, and i was i had done a lump sum my returns are still in uh, 30% plus kind of a category also because uh, it was at a time when the I I think I started this in April 2020 or uh, May 2020. That is the time when the markets were low. Real, I think the NAV at when I started it was seven bucks, and now I have no clue what is the NAV. I have not tracked the performance for a long time. But last time when I saw the returns was uh, upwards of 30 percent. Right. So there is no one single advice which suits everybody. So if I am trying to tell you don't invest in an index fund, that is because I am trying to tell you buy my newsletter, come and attend my session. My in my session. I will teach you how to uh, create your own portfolio. When I can do all that, why will I ask you to invest in an index fund or anywhere else? But index fund is the easiest for me to tackle. Therefore, I am saying please invest in an index fund and come and attend my classes on uh, how you should uh, build your portfolio, how many equity shares you should have, how many uh, uh, alpha funds or other large cap funds you should have, right? Seeking alpha. So I am contradicting myself because I am every YouTube video is just an invitation to come to my blog and buy something. I have nothing to sell. I have stopped doing workshops also. Maybe I will do, but other than workshops, I have nothing to sell. My books anyway have finished the sales. My publisher is out of this business, right? So I really don't have a product to sell. Yes, quickly I may have a product. I may uh, start writing again. But right now I have no product to sell to you. So be my guest, right? Thank you.